recording now. All right. So to just to review what I was do what I did last time. Um, I think I might just make a series of these. That's something like that. Half an inch from the bottom. Let me move the inch. Move an inch and then wait, I make three of them here. All right, let's get this first one here. <clears throat> okay, so often you see things, um, <clears throat> I guess, composition and image are sometimes split into geometric or geometrical organic um, just like that there. <clears throat> and so if you think about even just a simple geometric figure like a rectangle you can do these I mean, you could do an un, you know, pretty much in like an unlimited number of solutions just with a single figure. And you, you know, the term figure is kind of a more neutral way to talk about it. This is a shape, and you know, you can think about things like making it go from um, dense to sparse. That's one way of doing it. You could think of this like maybe even like with this rectangle, you could think of it like it's a, a brick or a block. Bigger. So um, I might just start with this. Pushing in from the left side, um, I could even overlap some of them. So you can, you know, you could make it look like it's like a built wall, or you could just make it look like it's these 
rectangular shapes just kind of floating. You don't have to have that like um, logic of realistic space or gravity or anything like that. And then as I draw to the right, I just make them just gradually draw fewer of them, <clears throat> excuse me, fewer of them and spread them out. Um, <clears throat> with some of them, I'll have it cropped, like cropped by the edge of the picture. I also, I'm trying to make it look random, so I was like just about to draw this one, and it was lined up to that. So I want to have this offset just a little bit. Um, it happens sometimes, you just kind of, without really thinking about it, you line things up when there isn't really a reason to do it. So I, it's one of the things that I learned in studying art and design is how to just kind of like start paying attention to that and then you, you know it's nice when you start to see it uh, before you do it but that takes takes practice you know a lot of um a lot of create all creative work really just about all work has a trial and error process i guess it's a aspects of like trial and error where you don't really know at the beginning what you're going to get because it doesn't exist and you can't you're not just copying something that's already finished um you know design work artwork um especially like design work somebody hires you to design something because it, because they don't have it <clears throat> and they can't just go out and get it and so you have to try to come up with, you know, um, you know, either like, um, you know, like a design for a poster or a design for a menu or, you know, some kind of promotional materials for um, an organization or a business. Um, so <clears throat> just having this comfort of just starting and just say, I'm going to start with this rectangle. And I know that I have to have it go from left to right across the image and make it seem like it's moving. So those are things that you have to have there. I mean, kind of like if you, you know, if you were doing work for a company that had a, already had a logo and already has a color scheme, there are certain things that you can't change. Um, so those kinds of restrictions are always part of design work. Okay. So this is, I think there's not enough transition here yet. We'll have to take some of this. It's a little too much. A little too much the same in the middle. <clears throat> yeah, that's already better. So I think, yeah, I can make, like what I'm finding myself doing is making them smaller as it goes left or right. And um, that's good. It's the, this is a, a, this is a decent solution. Maybe a good solution. And you know, as I'm drawing the, filling this in with the uh, brush marker, you know, so I'm starting to see some of them, like if I make these marker strokes, this one was a little too long, but I kind of like that extra shape. So I might now just adjust this and move away from just a rectangle and give them a little extra, some of them they can have a little bit of an extra Maybe that would be a good idea. Maybe it will fall. I don't know, but I've got to try it. 
And now here where I have them overlapping, I want to leave a little bit of like a, a little bit of like the white of the paper on that corner so that I can still see the the way they um, the way they are six like based to keep them separate. And feel free to follow along with me and come up with your like a your own version of what I'm doing because I think that will help you. You know, once you start to see how how this, you know how this works to create composition for this assignment, then I mean it makes it a lot easier for you to come up with this like continue doing it and come up with something that's uh, not what I'm doing. Okay, so this works just fine. I definitely see, you know, I might, I might make this a little more, just add a little bit more here. I think I'll have a little dry rub there. Right. <clears throat> so just changing the um, the shape slightly just um, gives it a little bit more variety. I'm just kind of doing it um, in different places. It's you know something of an arbitrary choice, but I'm just I'm trying to like I'm using that idea that I stumbled upon to create this like a little bit more complicated shape and. It changes the character of them. Okay, that's pretty good. That could say that is number one. All right. <clears throat> Organic. So I talked about this last time, but I think the reviewing this is, is a good idea because um, it just you're gonna you're gonna do it frequently where you have to come up with something and you think about what's the like what is the character of what I'm doing um, and I think just switching from something that's more rigid in its shape to something that's a little bit more um, freeform or a little bit less um, I don't know I guess it's a little more complex. So the organic, we talked about this last time, where like, you know, a leaf, like that leaf shape. Um, I mean, yeah, like something organic can be kind of blobby. Oops. A little bit smaller there. So something that's, you know, kind of like a blobby shape like that, that could be kind of fun to work with. Um, and just seeing it. I don't know exactly what I would do with it, but I think I'm going to try because that's it's unusual. I mean, people like to see successful and unusual solutions. So, yeah, and um, I'm not really sure what this is. This is not really meant to be like representative of anything specific um, kind of has a little bit of like a um, puddle octopus except it's only got three little tentacles or I don't even know what something simpler some little animal simpler than an octopus but um, 
abstraction isn't supposed to be like like I made this little blobby thing and then the viewer is supposed to figure out what it what it's supposed to be. This is really meant to be um, kind of open-ended in terms of what it could mean. And that way, the person looking at it <clears throat> can project their own, I guess, opinion or um, you know, they can project their own impression on it. And then it kind of, you know, the viewer, if the, the viewer participates more in looking at abstraction than uh, in real, than when looking at realism. Okay. Now, if I want this to go, all right, so I'm going to try something here. But then what am I going to do? I see these like negative shapes here. And I think it's um, kind of makes sense to me to make it kind of curve in there and to occupy that negative space. Now you don't have to go left to right. You can go right to left um, as long as you're going across the long way. All right. Hmm. Is, Better. So this, the marker uh, helps a lot in terms of creating really strong contrast. So you can see what your image is doing pretty quickly. Now I'm, I might, I think I might do something similar as what I did here and maybe kind of thin it out as it goes to the right and like maybe like kind of like down because these the curvy shapes are kind of all kind of pointing down this way. And so like you see this curve right here, if you use curves like this, the person looking at your picture, um, usually referred to as the viewer, well, like you're, you know, it's pretty hard not to follow this edge and like this high contrast, like this shape, almost like a river seen from above. The eye follows it. And so these, all these shapes are kind of like leading the viewer's eye down this way. Um, you know, you could have something like a focal point where 
there might be just like a, you know, like nothing here, but everything kind of brings the viewer down. Let's try that. Now I'm going to just let myself have this where it's a little bit of a variation on the on this requirement. Everything is going across here. I don't think this quite works to make this a, a focal point. I think I'm going to uh, change what I'm doing here. Add a little extra. Bigger so it makes more sense. Yeah. All right. This one. This one is okay. I think I got a little indecisive. I should have just kept everything flowing out. Um, but it's, it's not bad. There's a lot of movement, but um, I think it needs to be coordinated a little bit better this way. I'm going to try again up here. Um, you know, when you draw these, like if, you, if I'm drawing this one as I was, and I had this idea that was very general, um, and I drew this, and I was kind of still trying to figure out what I wanted to do as I was drawing it, that makes, you know, like maybe it's not the greatest solution. So I'll come up with, uh, maybe I'll try another one up here that's, I like this long, long piece right here. So I'm going to do another one and I'm going to make some changes. Not that. I think if I just like sketch these things maybe a little bit more loosely, I can get this to figure out something that works better. Just drawing these, like some of these, like, you know, starting to try to figure out these shapes and drawing lines 
right over other lines. I think it's uh, very helpful. Let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, it's interesting when you try making variations on something, you sometimes don't make it better, but you make it different. And I think this is okay. Well, we'll see. Um, you know, you, I always want my work to be successful. And right while I'm making it or right after I've made it, it's, it's um, often not the best time to decide if it's good or not. You usually need to uh, do something else and then come back to it and look and see how it looks. You know, like, does it still look, does it look good? And then does it still look good an hour later? Um, now that I find that if I'm trying to do something and I don't feel like I succeeded, I can be disappointed at what didn't work or what didn't seem to work well. And then I won't be able to see what is working well. And so you kind of have to put your work aside sometimes and just let your mind catch up with what you did rather than emphasize your disappointment with what you did not succeed at doing. I see that a lot in um, the work done by students who are learning, learning how to do this. And it's pretty normal. Like, you know, you've got an idea in your head, and it's really hard to, um, I mean, it's really impossible to just illustrate a picture that's in your head. Because in your, in your mind, it's not made of pencil or ink or paper. It's, it's kind of hard to say it's made of anything. It's just this, um, something that exists in your imagination. So to try to draw that can be really difficult because in your head, you know, in your mind, it doesn't need to be made of, of this. It doesn't have to be, you know, drawn out. And so that can be, um, you know, really impossible to just illustrate something that you can see in your mind. Um, these are okay. I think I've tried to like what I'm doing. Um, you know, when you think about you're going to put together three compositions together. Um, I think to have, I mean, these three, like if I were to like put these together on one, in like, you know, like, um, like normally we do this in class um, and we make these with cut paper, I might take this one, if I'm using these three, put this one in the middle. So you have two, um, two compositions that are different, but similar. <clears throat> And then and organic, and then you have this geometric one in the middle. Um, that could look kind of cool. Maybe what I'll do is where are my scissors? Five pair of scissors around here. Every time I'm looking for scissors, there's some place there you are. I cover them.
Why don't I just cut this out and cut them and then I can compose them how I want to. You're taking this border off of it allows you to see it more like without the distraction of just the, the clutter that can occur in the border. All right. Okay. So I'm going to put that in the middle. I had them with that one. And like that. Even amount of space in between them but you want to have a little bit of a gap so that those compositions are separate. Um, on this one's upside down, I kind of like it turned upside down so that this is, I mean, it's, it's good. When I turn this upside down, I can see this one does seem to be flowing this direction. Um, yeah, that's actually, this is a pretty decent trio of, uh, of compositions for this. So the thing that I've always find, uh, interesting and kind of fun about this is that when you put these like I put any three of these compositions together um, they kind of like in your mind you kind of like put the three together and there can be kind of like a Either like just like a, there's a relationship, there's a potentially a story, even if it's um, you know an abstract story. Um, but the different character of like this sort of smooth curving edge and then the more like rigid rectangular edge, um, I think that's pretty interesting. How does that look to you? looks very interesting and uh actually with the octopus idea that you gave yeah i'm uh, scribbling at the same time so i want to show it to you i don't know if, you, if i can yes the... i'm gonna i'll stop sharing my uh my tablet and then um now i think do you have on your screen do you see a button that says share yeah okay so that I mean i think I, I i i have this set up so that um you guys can share you so you can share your screen you can also just hold it up to the camera uh let me try with the camera because i have to take a picture if, right, if that works. Yeah, just yeah let's see um hold on it's very dark yeah, there you go light um can you see anything no nah, i can see that it's there, um, it's a little bit light. If you let me take a picture of this. Okay. Or if you could just, um, yeah, I mean, okay, so if you've got like a, you know, if you've got a marker or something like that, or a pen that you can just ink it so that it's 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 darker than the pencil. I think that I could see that too. Okay. Let me let me try this one for.
Yeah, I'm gonna darken it really fast with my okay. the ink. Yeah, that's uh yeah, normally as, as long as the, as long as it's dark enough, if you just hold it up to the camera on your on your computer I can see it. Uh, can you see it now? I forgot some lines, but yes, that's much better. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. I think that's a good composition. The way that they all kind of lean in one direction, and the curl, like a little sprout. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to add some circles, but I'll do that in in a different one. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, yeah. Yeah, so that you could, yeah, that's good. That's very, very good. You can, you can create more like depth by the way you overlap them, and like helps to show like that little, like a little sliver of the paper underneath, in between yeah. them, so that space. Okay. So it looks like space, and then yeah, like you could have like um, circles floating through there too. Uh, you could even like have them like the little that's like that scroll curl lower and then above it you can leave space almost like there's just like air above them where you'd have like you know circles pods something just kind of floating along okay yeah i will try that's a good idea uh excuse me yes we use something like stars or something definitely um i will do yeah, I'll do a demo with stars. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Bring my camera back.
So stars. So like, um, are you thinking like a like so kind of like a standard five point star? Maybe Captain Marvel star. Oops, sorry, you can't really see that, can you? Um, there. Um, there are the original star works. This one, five point star. Yeah. All right. So this is a good one. Like, um, so like this, that, sh that star is like, uh, it's something that people, people know what it is. So it's not like some of the others like this, you know, blobby stuff doesn't have, it doesn't carry like any like clear, like meaning, but the star does. So if you were to do like, um, like, are you thinking like uh, stars in the sky or just using it as a shape? I'm using it like a shape. Okay. So they could be like, uh, you know, I kind of like this. Uh, I remember drawing stars like this when I was a kid. And, you know, I always like liked the idea of like arms and legs. And so these can kind of seem like maybe if I stretch them out. They might seem like they're reaching. So you can kind of create this thing. Um, you know, the um, anthropomorphic. The vocabulary word of the day. Morphic is when you give human characteristics to something that is inanimate. So, like if I, you know, make these. Can you pronounce it again? Yes. Please. Uh, anthropomorphic. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, anthro refers to humans, and then morph is change. So, you kind of change something into something human. So, I mean, and if you really like. You can do it without you know, putting like a face on it. You know, that's don't do that. Just use the shape. But like this. Try something. Here. them get a little sometimes even you know, after you draw a whole bunch of them you kind of change your mind a little bit um, and so far I catch myself not overlapping them which I there's no reason really that I shouldn't here we go. I'm just gonna two. And I drew this just kind of straight across. These others have more like a freehand character to them, so I'm gonna have to redraw that. <laughs> Start to look old. See? Yeah, so I do, I mean, I like this, this shape drawn this way, they start to do care, take on like a figurative 
uh, quality where you know they look like they're just like diving or flying. So let's see where is my marker. Now this, because these are stars, um, I might, I think it would probably be a better idea to draw them as like as white figures, which means I would darken the background, not the stars. So I'm going to try that again up here. So if I sketch these out, Yeah, they can. I mean, honestly, they just they get a little bit more interesting if I draw them fairly quickly and I don't worry about making them perfect. They start to look a little bit more like figures or have that anthropomorphic quality. here. Okay, something like that. That works pretty well. And so if I, um, what I think I might do is just carefully outline my stars. If you don't press too hard with this brush pen, then you can get it like, like a lighter, thinner line. And then, you know, each of these lines on the contour of the star, I can draw them straighter if I draw them quickly. It's just like a quick stroke with the brush, with this brush marker. Okay. Let's 
here. Apparently it's time for him to eat again. All right, so then, mm -hmm. hold on a second, Dennis, come here. I'm almost done, all right, let me finish this. Come in here and you just uh, fill in the background right up to the line. And then instead of the shapes being black, the shapes will be white. Is it a good idea like to mix uh, the background, like uh, half of it to be black, half of it to be white? Um, you know that you you know that uh, you could. It actually might be a good way to make this transition. Um, you know, if you're doing this all, if everything is going to be either black or white, you'd have to decide like where does this. Like if you want to make a transition in the background, you could decide where the transition starts. Like maybe here, and I guess it could leave like a little gap. And start maybe doing some like stripes in the back and let them spread out. It might be um, challenging. Let's see here. Let's try, I'm going to try that. Oh, you mean like kind of lines disappear, like yeah, blends with the blend with each other, right? Well, yeah. So like, what would happen is like there would, I guess, um, because I'm thinking of this <laughs> kind of like if you do like uh, like spread these out and make them thinner, it can look kind of like it makes this like transition that way. Okay. Which can help, you know, sort of, it can help to um, sort of like really um, reinforce the illusion of that transition left to right. But I want to make sure that I can do this like, uh, we'll see. I'm just going to see. I might just, you know, like if it doesn't really work that well, then I'll just fill in the whole thing black. You know, I, I put these stars down not thinking about, um, you know, any kind of a background. So that was kind of requires me to do some, that's actually kind of, you know, this could kind of work, but then as I'm over here, like if I want, I'm going to do like the stars black on this side. And then maybe as I get closer here. Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're, you know, since, um, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be online this week and then we're back in person next week. So next week, Thursday, we're going to meet in person in um, L113 on campus. Uh, normally I have you do this with cut paper and so what I'm doing now drawing would be really difficult to do just with the paper but since we're drawing it you can you know make some alterations here 
and just try to create that. Like as long as I don't lose the shape of the star, you could do this. Oh, that's cool. Actually, I like this idea now. This looks very cool. I like it. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. So, but you know, it's 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 easy. I mean, it's I still have to fight this like tendency. Like it's it can be very easy to talk yourself out of something before you've done it. And you know, like because you it's like oh, that's not going to work, and so you don't try, and then you know. You really, you don't really know. If you if you didn't try, then you know you don't know, and then you know it's really. I've I've had it happen to me. Like I remember when I was in college, I talked myself out of doing something that I thought like, oh, that'd be cool. And then like, nah, it's not going to work. So I did something that was simpler and easier, and then go to a critique, and then find that somebody else in the class did what I was going to do, and it was great. And then you kick yourself. It's like, well, I guess that's what you get for giving up before you even did anything. So these, I think, um, yeah, so, you know, try things. If things don't work, you can scrap it and move on and do something else. But, you know, these drawings don't have to take too much of your time. awkward the way this like gets cropped by the corner i really wish i could see more of the like the shape of the star but oh well this is just a this is a sketch so like if i like this idea to think like this was cool um and both of you take you know take this idea and make your own version of it uh go right ahead um The finished drawings are going to be five by ten inches, and this is three by six. You know, like that's ten inches is is like way out. It's like you know significantly larger. Um, so. What that means is that you have a lot more room to uh, make it look a little bit more, I guess, detailed. And the thing I want to make sure I would want you to make sure you do is don't lose the edge of the star. Like in here, where there's this transition, um, I'm kind of losing the edge of the star a little bit. It's a little bit is okay. But I don't want the stars, you know, I want the stars to still show up. So where you have like the, where the background is light, the stars have to be dark. Where the background is dark, the stars have to be light. And yeah, then in this transitional area, um, but as long as this, this can actually be a little bit mushy as long as this is clear, this is clear. You definitely follow the transition. Good, thank you. Those are good, good suggestions, both of you. Thanks. So this is. Thank you for showing us. Very good. One hundred percent. Okay. So um, yeah. So work on these and. Um, I will see you both on Thursday morning. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. You too.